your host, Lisa Mulcahy, a marine biologist and educator with Reef Keeper Belize, based on beautiful Tobacco Key in the Southwater Key Marine Reserve near Dangriga. This is Alexander Moore, Reef Keeper's assistant educator, and I'm Amy O'Brien, former host of DIY with Ames and Salvage Unicorn YouTube channel. We're, We're here, here to take a dive into undersea Belize. Gary, the Goliath grouper, our mascot. Goliath groupers need our help for its protection since it's an endangered species. It can grow up to eight feet in length and live more than 50 years. This is actually a young grouper here. Hi guys, I'll be back a little later with your activity and to find out what you have learned today. So make sure you pay very close attention. Last episode, we explored humans' connections to the sea. We discovered how many benefits Belizeans receive from their coral reefs, mangroves, and seagrass. We also learned how our personal actions can affect the marine environment for good and for bad. And today, we're going to focus on stewardship of our ocean home. Stewardship means taking care of an area or resources, such as fish or coral, for example. These are the positive actions people do to help keep important ocean habitats intact. Taking care of the sea is God's work. When we take care of our reef, we're taking care of our friends, our neighbors, and ourselves, who all depend on a healthy marine environment for their jobs, food, peace of mind, and even the air we breathe. We understand that our actions matter for others and that we don't live in a box. Everything we do is connected. To love the reef and the fish is to love our fellow man and love God's creation. Teaching people about Belize's marine habitats and coast is one way people can help their environment. <laughs> Since 2012, Reef Keeper Belize, based on Tobacco Key, has been educating students just like you about the importance of the sea and coast and how to take care of it. Tree, this is a magnificent frigate bird. We also have the cormorants, pelicans, and also the brown booby, or sometimes they call them yellow-footed booby because of the color of the feet. And um, this island, of course, is a protected area, number one, because of the birds that live here. It's a bird sanctuary, and that means that no one can enter the island. The island has no natural predators such as snakes or crocodiles or anything like that. So the birds call this island home. I must say that I feel very privileged to be on this trip here today. I feel especially blessed for our students on a whole because this is an experience for them that will definitely last a lifetime. It is also one that I believe some of them wouldn't have been able to afford it. Their families wouldn't be able to afford something like this on their own. So having them be out here today is a learning experience. It is a fun experience. And as I mentioned before, it is one that will, will last with them a lifetime. So thank you to Reef Keepers and to everyone who made it possible. We're very, very happy to be here today. What else is the reef important for? It protects us from the hurricane. So where does sand come from? Anybody know? From the They do it Then it develops and it turns into sand when it's finished developing into a process. An important way to help the sea is to create more homes for fish and lobsters. Seaweed farming, in addition to making a tasty, healthy seaweed drink, also provides habitat. By growing natural seaweed on ropes in a sea-based farm, young fish and lobsters may have places to hide. 
These young fish and lobsters then can move to populate the reef as adults. Who is protecting our oceans? Government regulations also are crucial to help prevent problems like overharvesting of fish, also known as overfishing, and illegal fishing. Government protections set aside protected areas such as the Southwater Key Marine Reserve and other places where fish spawn as a group. Belize laws also protect endangered species such as sea turtles and manatees and regulate the times to catch conch and lobster to preserve them for future generations. During the closed season or even during the open season, our biologists conduct a different kind of monitoring and all the data that is collected is bring it to the department and here is where um, all of the data is processed and then management decisions are being taken. Um, for example, there's that's how and the close season came about because of the breeding um, time for the lobster. It gives them time for them to reproduce. Uh, so that will have a balance with the resources that right? you cannot fish um, certain species during close seasons. We have size limits for different um, species. I just want to emphasize that the regulations are not only for fishers, it's for the general public. We ask everyone to respect open and closed season size limits, protected areas. They play an important role in our country. I know that Belize also protects special places too, where there's important fish habitat or nesting birds. Isn't that right, Mr. Chikas? Yes. Belize set aside important areas in the sea to protect sensitive areas where fish gather to breed. We also protect areas where birds nest or where rare species live. Um, these special areas are called marine reserves. Um, the way they work is that they provide a safe haven for sea life that can breed and populate, repopulate, I would say, other nearby areas. Uh, marine reserves protect habitats and other necessary areas for marine life to ensure that we can continue to fish and enjoy the sea in the future. Home is an essay for future generations. Yes. I'm still confused, like, why do we have closed seasons? Why can't we just go whenever we feel like, as long as we don't take much? Our job is to not only protect, but it's also to study the, the life cycles of species such as lobsters and conks. So if you have, um, let's say a single mama lobster, and a papa lobster can produce up to 700,000 eggs at a time, right? So if you don't give them the time for them to reproduce, and if you don't give them the space for them to create and release their eggs, that means that whenever you catch one lobster during a close season, you're killing up to 700,000 eggs at a time, right? So this means 100, 700,000 baby lobsters plus the mama lobster that you're killing. So this is one of the main reasons why we have close seasons and size limits within the marine reserves. That was an excellent, excellent explanation, Mr. Lindalfa. Thank you. I know Amory and I learned a lot, right, Amory? Yes, I have learned a lot. Great. Suppose you have, let's say conch season is over, but you have conch in your, in your freezer. Is that illegal? Yes, it is illegal. Um, the regulation implies that uh, no one is allowed to have conks during the closed seasons. So for example, let's say your mom owns a restaurant, right? She might have maybe like 10 pounds of uh, conks before the season is closed, right? So she knows that at the end of the month, okay, the um, conk season is closing. So she has all that time to get rid of that conks, you know, like either sell it or eat it or give it to family, whatever, right? So um, let's say that for some reason, your mom was unable to, 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 to get rid of the, of the conks. Um, you know, like, and somebody reports it, you know, like our job is to go and check. It would be really hard for your mom to, to prove to us that she had that conks from before the season closed, right? I'm pretty sure that there will be a lot of people buying conks during the closed season and claiming that they had it from during the open, the season was open. Right, so that's one of the main reasons why it's not allowed to have it during close season because it's very difficult to prove that yes, you, you got the cons during the, the open season.
Beyond Belize, the United Nations Development Program is part of an international body that has goals for promoting sustainable development. These sustainable development goals, which all nations agreed to in 2015, are goals 1 to 17. Undersea Belize is part of a larger education and community engagement project linked to sustainable development goal 14, Life Below Water. Life Below Water promotes the things that we can do to sustain our ocean environment for future generations to ensure your children and grandchildren can continue to enjoy the beauty and bounty of the sea. Life Underwater consists of goals to preserve ocean and coasts such as marine pollution prevention, regulating over-harvesting of fish, and conserving 10% of marine and coastal protected areas by 2020. Here are some simple things you can do to help keep the reef and be a reef keeper. One, avoid using plastic bags and plastic bottles. Make sure to use a reusable bag and have your own reusable refillable bottle. Make sure your garbage is stored properly in a bag in a bin. Mind what goes on your land. Oil, weed killer, dish soap, and laundry detergent are not good for the land or the reef. When at sea, remember three. Don't touch corals or animals. Make sure you anchor on the sand and dispose of engine oils in the proper containers. Don't eat any colorful parrot fish, sharks, goliath grouper, or other grazing fish. And lastly, remember to follow the regulations because they are there to protect our beautiful creatures for our future. See you later, fellow reef keeper! Bye -bye. Hi guys, this is Gary the Grouper again. I'm here today with your activities for today. Today we're going to make a compost in your yard. First, we're going to need two bins or buckets, gloves, or small bags to make gloves, a shovel, a piece of wood, or a large banana leaf. Right? That's for your compost. Each day, you're going to sort your vegetables waste into a bin as follows. Place all your vegetables, fruits, and paper into one bin. Dig a one foot by one foot hole in your garden for the vegetable waste. Each day, put the vegetable waste in the hole in your garden to compost. Cover with the board or leaves that you obtain. You can add a next layer on top and cover with more leaves or the board. In several weeks, you can use this compost in your garden. Hi guys, this is Gary the Grouper. We're going to do a second activity for today. So for this activity, we're going to record what kind of soaps and cleaners you use in your family. First, you got to start by recording the types of soaps and cleaners your family use. Are they environmentally friendly products? If not, we, you research how to make your own environmentally friendly product at home. Hey guys, question one. Describe three ways in which you can help the reef, seagrass, and mangroves. Check out our previous episodes for clues and answers or on the Reef Keeper Belize Facebook page. Question two. What can we do in our daily life to help the reef? Give me two answers. Question three. We can always do more to help our ocean in many new and thoughtful ways. Think and describe an action to help the reef that was not mentioned in the show. Get innovative and creative. Send us your photos and ideas for chances to win amazing prizes. Doing good things to help the reef can be fun, right, Amory? Yes. You can contact your friends to do cleanups, challenge each other to sew the most beautiful reusable bags, compete to make the most compost, create your own household cleaning items for cheap, and decorate reusable cups. There are so many ideas. Even small actions can make a big difference. One less bag, one tree planted, 
one person educated can make a lasting difference for a lifetime. I say, if we want to preserve our reef, plant a mangrove, name it after one of your dear relatives, and watch it get back to your children and your children's children for a lifetime. Be sure and check out our Facebook page at Reef Keeper Belize or YouTube and learn about the prizes and surprises. Each correctly answered quiz question gets a t-shirt. Post your experiment photos and results on the Facebook page to receive fabulous prizes. The super fan of each episode will join one of our field trips to the Southwater Key Marine Reserve along with students to visit the mangroves, the key, the reef, and seagrass. See our Facebook page for details. Thank you for watching!